Well, it was the first half where perhaps we saw uh, a few similarities from Norwich City from uh, last season. And I think I've had a bit of a telling off actually from Mario Vrancic to stop comparing things to last season. But it's very hard because there's such a stark um, comparison. But uh, the second half very much was different and it was an exemplification, if that's a, the right word, of uh, Norwich's um, goal threat that they carry this season. And actually, in many ways, Rotherham sorted out the problems that a lot of teams have got coming up against Norwich, which is that you, you get caught really between um, holding them and, and trying to sit deep and not giving them the spaces or trying to go for them and score at the other end and, and then leaving the spaces that Norwich you know, thankfully, because they're reasonably ruthless at the moment, you know they will take advantage of and score from. So that's a very good situation to uh, be in. Here's the uh, Lauren. Is that Todd Cantwell? I don't think it was Todd Cantwell. He's moved on a long way since, since then. Um, yeah, the opposition, it was the same with Hull. Hull could have gone for a victory in midweek, but opted to sit back because they know if they'd have pushed too hard, they might have lost what they had. And um, again, it factors into this whole thing with Norwich this season that uh, actually it's not about knowing what Norwich City do, it's about stopping them doing it. Because again, they didn't really change the way they played today. Um, there was, you know, plan- I-, I had a tweet, a message on the Pink and Live uh, Facebook, <laughs> oh dear. the uh, Pink and pinkin.com live coverage uh, saying Norwich need a plan B there's no plan B and that was after about 25 minutes um, but what they do is they tweak plan A until they get it right and that says a lot about the quality they've got and, and the way they can compete this season and as I've said a few times already uh, since September time long may this continue so they won 3-1 Rotherham took the lead uh, it was Daniel Farker believes the goal had a hint of offside but it was, an, it was a, a Volks shot from, uh, from um, outside the box from a short corner routine that Krull spilled again he, he didn't he spilled it back into the six yard box rather than out and I think we saw from Swansea and we saw seen it a few times Tim Krull it's a, it's a weakness and it does need to improve and none of the defenders reacted the Norwich defenders I mean Daniel will say that's because it was offside I haven't seen that replay particularly um, but I think it was Newell who, uh, who slotted home and actually Rotherham had a couple of really good chances on the break and that goal did rock Norwich they, they, were, they were quite poor for the next sort of 10 minutes having completely dominated the opening um, exchanges themselves themselves Norwich they got better in, in as the, the half wore on it was very scratchy though Rotherham were doing a good job of frustrating things and um, it was scratchy and and Norwich were getting a bit stuck on the edge of their box and because of course Mario Francis had come in for uh, Moritz Leitner they were just it was just a few traits of maybe getting stuck into some of the old habits of of last season second half though put it to bed and as Mario said they sat in the dressing room at half time looked around at each other and said we've been in this situation before we've got the belief we will win this and we didn't hear that as much certainly last year and, and generally it didn't happen either um, they did it by moving the ball slightly quicker and they found better spaces Rotherham did tire and of course once the first goal went in Rotherham's dynamic changed a lot and you could see the confidence and, and maybe maybe not confidence but the belief in their own situation not getting worse and um, you know that sort of had a had a sizable negative impact on them on themselves um now the equal i've got to try and make sure i get these in the right order um Todd Cantwell got the equaliser, a brilliant cutback from uh, Tamer Pukki to find him and a wonderful finish first time from Todd, his first senior goal, uh, which is of course a huge moment for him as a Norfolk boy too. The second soon followed, which was Jamal Lewis to Todd Cantwell, a wonderful cross and Max Aaron's flicked header. Max was superb all game, by the way, my man of the match, even though Todd, as you've already heard, now got an assist and a goal. And of course that triumvirate of Lewis, Todd and uh, Max Aaron's creating that second goal is a wonderful moment for Norwich City's academy and just exemplifies again everything Norwich are trying to show. Uh, I saw Todd Cantwell's goal was officially, according to some statistician, statistician, statisticians, the first goal scored by an Englishman this season. Of course, by that you're disregarding a Jordan Rhodes, who therefore is effectively Scottish, even though he was born in Oldham and has a particularly broad Oldham accent. Um, Either way, it's it, you know I'm not buying that. If anyone wants to have a go at Norwich for too many foreigners scoring all their goals, then have a look at the squad and have a look at the way they're developing young players. Um, so Todd got that one go, and then Max Aaron's goal. That was his first in the league. Uh, obviously, having scored at Cardiff in the Cap- uh, Carabao Cup earlier in the season, just a wonderful moment. And Norwich then had several chances to have made it th- uh, three, four, or even five actually, um, but ultimately. Um, they couldn't take those until uh, Marco Stiepermann robbed um, 
um, oh I can't remember who he robbed now Ajay on the edge of the box and uh, that allowed he then slotted a lovely ball actually through to uh, Tamu Puki who slotted into the empty goal and, um, um, and certainly made sure that he thanked um, Marco Stiepelman for the assist which of course was a, a wonderful moment um, and one that put the game to bed because even then Rotherham didn't sort of stop pushing and likewise Norwich as I said could have scored um, could have scored after that again as well um, so ultimately in, in an open game Norwich were able to take advantage it took them back to the top of the division uh, were given that Leeds have uh, had won just before at Sheffield United thanks to a sizable helping hand from Dean Henderson and uh, it's uh, Aston Villa Middlesbrough uh, kicking off this evening obviously Aston Villa are on the telly why wouldn't they be um, so we'll wait to see how that pans out but if Villa if, if uh, Villa win then Middlesbrough will actually be five points adrift in third of Norwich so there's a bit of a gap then developing big game for Middlesbrough and certainly not an easy one of course either so that's all uh, that's all good I think that all played out Rotherham did hit the post um, and the inside of the post as well in the first half and it's fair to say that those kind of moments are, have gone in Norwich's favour because that's just a slightly wayward finish isn't it if that goes in Norwich are 2-0 down at half time it's a very different order and eventually they're going to have to just be a little bit sharper in the first half I think they've scored about I think it's a fourth a quarter of the goals they scored in the second half they've compared to this, what they scored in the first half I think it's 7 versus 28 I think Chris Goron was telling me I can't remember the exact stats but you know, that's a vast uh, difference and it's alright as long as they keep being able to dig themselves out but if we're going to be really picky as the season goes on they've got to be a little bit careful they don't leave themselves with too much work to do uh, one late breaker which is actually broken uh, tonight which is that Ed Balls has stepped down as Norwich City chairman I um, hope you've caught that you can read all about that at pinkon.com right now um, I understand it not going to be replaced I don't, I don't think Norwich particularly feel that the current ownership and the current guys in charge don't feel they need a replacement chairman uh, I doesn't really affect the places on the board either because there's a minimum number that they're still above I think so um, and Ed Balls has got other projects that are coming in and sounds like it was his decision probably plays into the way Norwich are, are developing the club behind the scenes as well so I wouldn't say it's just one of those things that's happened and probably suits most parties at this moment uh, I think he officially steps down on Boxing Day I think off the top of my head so that's obviously uh, an end of an era it'll be interesting to see who chairs the AGM as a quite a little side point but uh, clearly um, Ed will still be following progress quite tightly and let's hope that uh, he's managed to oversee a, a period of time where this sizable transition at Carrow Road ends up with uh, something very very special at the end of it i have to say today was one of those where i thought injuries difficult opponents this was a really tricky one and and i felt if this wasn't going to go norwich's way it could be quite a defining moment and like because the the confidence would have slipped and people would be worried about the fact that norwich was so streaky last season maybe that was going to replicate itself this season as it happens this doesn't look particularly streaky because Norwich have picked up a cracking win and a pack cracking comeback win at that. And again, it's probably just more evidence that once again, this Norwich City side could be, could be on the verge of something special this season. But of course, there is a long way to go. We're not even halfway. Don't need to tell me about all that. Addendum, addendum. Um, fair play, of course, to uh, the uh, fans groups who got involved. I think it was Barclay M Project. Um, maybe Long Come Norwich as well and Proud Canaries for sorting out the Justin Fashion new banner before uh, kick-off. I hope if you were at the game today you got a bit of cake, rainbow cake, which tasted very nice, as you would have seen on the Pink and Show during the week, and you got a pair of rainbow laces. I've been wearing mine on my microphone. There they are, resplendent. And hopefully that whole message of the work and the um, awareness that's generated by the Rainbow Laces can, uh, campaign uh, resonated with you. Um, Wonderful places to come and watch football at the moment, Carrow Road, just in general. I think um, I didn't really give fair credit to the fans because I thought the atmosphere in the second half, the, just the crowd upped it. There's sometimes a debate about chicken and egg. Is it the supporters? Is it the team? Who needs to do it first? Well, I'll tell you what, the second half, the supporters notched it. Um, and then within two or three minutes, Norwich equalised. And from then on, the, the ball was, the snowball was rolling and that was that. Um, long may that unity and that sense of togetherness continue we saw it with Daniel Farker celebrations at the end and I don't know what the technical term is but I know that Jurgen Klopp and David Wagner did similar oi, 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 celebrations at full time uh, Daniel Farker did that for the first time outside Cow Road so that all factors in to the, uh, the feeling around this club and as I said yeah 3-1 win over Rotherham it'll probably be forgotten all the finer details but certainly a lot of this today um, 
was uh, was was spot on for how Norwich can uh, proceed over the coming weeks and months. Pinker.com for all the uh, fallout and a- analysis, reaction, and all sorts. Of course, Pinker.com. Catch all that, and there'll be loads more over the coming uh, week, including on the new Pinker app. Uh, so you know where to check that all out. And uh, we will see you back here next weekend for Bolton's visit. We'll see how that one goes.